<laughs> Anyhow, um, my name is Ronnie Ong. I'm a project manager at UC Berkeley, and I'm a project manager for the Identity and Access Management team. I also want to introduce my colleagues here. I'm going to start with Jeff McCullough, developer in our team. Mimi Muggler, who is um, soon analyst. going to be 100% on our team. And Ben, back there, will also be giving a couple of talks <coughs> during the conference. So um, we're here to talk about our guest management system. Uh, in fact, we are uh, coming up with a refactored new system. In, uh, we're we're uh, going live in a couple of weeks. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So why guest accounts? How many here have guest account systems in your institutions? And how long have you had them? Well, forever. Forever? <laughs> well, we didn't. Uh, we, uh, four years ago is when we started thinking about implementing a system like this <coughs> because there was demand on campus for it. Um, and so uh, we were thinking about, well, what are guests? Um, and in our institution, guests are people who are not members of the campus community. They are not students. They're not staff. And they're not um, alumni. Um, we also have a category called affiliates, and affiliates are also part of the campus community. And so typically, if, if uh, a system then wanted a guest to use our systems, they would have to go through the process of getting HR to make them affiliate, and it's a very large overhead to do that. Um, so so th that's why there's a demand on campus to have guests, a guest account management <coughs> system, which would make things easier, hopefully faster, to get that done. Um, well, so what we did was we met with camp the campus community to get requirements for it. And we came up with goals of making it a, an easy and intuitive system to use. And we also wanted the sponsor of, of the guest to be able to do it themselves. So it's got to be self-service. So a couple of systems on our campus that are really interested in doing this are our collaborative systems. One is uh, the, uh, we call it Research Hub, which is an Alfresco product. And the other one we call CalShare, which is a SharePoint product. And so we developed this guest system four years ago using Oracle WaveSet. Even though we knew that it was going to be sunsetted in a few years, we decided that that's just what we're going to do and deal with it a few years later. So a few years later is now. <laughs> and, so, uh, and so when we are uh, in refactoring the talent guest systems, there are certain things that we took into consideration. I mean, obviously, a big driver is the end of life. Yeah, so we needed to, to change the technology. And um, in terms of our team and our direction, we also uh, have uh, intentionally decided to go towards open source uh, and a loosely coupled architecture. And so um, given that, um, at that time, we were also, and, and we still are, interested in the open registry project and have participated in, in discussions in that and the development of that. So, uh, in, in, so, it, so we, we thought that this guest system would be um, sort of uh, the, the kind of to get our feet wet into using OR. And, and use that as one of the components of our guest system. So let me just show you quickly uh, the architecture. There's a lot, there's a lot going on. Um, and this is what we mean by loosely coupled. This is the, the guest management application is the one that, that was rewritten. Uh, we're using OR to get the ID. And OR uses ID match. And so there are sessions in OR and ID Match. Uh, I think ID Match is afternoon or tomorrow, if you're interested in more of that. But we're using these components. And we actually had um, Unicon work with us in adding more features to OR to accommodate our guest system. Um, so get, uh, Jeff will talk about this kind of, you know, in detail later. But I just wanted to point out those pieces to you. We're using a credential management system for the guests to go in to, to create their ID. And that is a, a refactored, uh, not refactored, but it, it's reused code from UCSF. So that's uh, something that we're doing. And for the provisioning service, we're using uh, Forge Ross, OpenIBM, into Active Directory, OpenIBM, you know, all that. 
but I will leave that for Jeff to talk to you about. So what I wanted to do is just show you um, some screenshots of the guest system. So for example, if Mimi were to sponsor me, this is the first screen that she will see. She will click on Invite Guests. And it's very simple. We, we don't ask for too many data elements. She will fill that in, first name, last name, my email address. And the sponsor, sponsorship duration is either six months or a year. Then after that, um, you know, she gets a confirmation screen. And then I will receive an email. This is like lots of text. But the most important piece of this email is that I'll, I'll see my ID, which is based on the email address that I gave, and an activation key. And so what I do then is go to this app, manage my credentials, put in my calendar ID and activation key, and upon that, I can create my passphrase. And that's it. It's fairly simple. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Jeff to talk about how the pieces fit for now and for the future. Hey, how you doing? Um, the guest app was a big success. Uh, a lot, lot more uh, several other applications started using it. And we needed to move forth and conquer the world. But in the short term, the uh, taking out wave set, uh, one of the things Ronnie was talking about there is that uh, Oracle had just purchased uh, Acquired Sun, and we needed to go ahead and move forward. We didn't know what product we were going to use, so we'll just go ahead and use wave set. And of course, now we're at the point where we need to pull out wave set because we're going <coughs> to run out of license in a very short amount of time. The original guest app. Um, incorporated all the features it needed, which was, you know, the workflow, the um, the provisioning, and the uh, credential management. And at this point, we're actually pulling all, all those things apart. So the guest app now, is in its refactored state, is basically about just collecting the information and sequencing the operations. The, the provisioning is done completely separately, and the credentialing is done separately. We're using uh, Grails for our identity console app overall, and also using Activity as the workflow engine. The in this particular case, the workflow is just more. There's no approval necessary. If you're allowed to use the application, then the the approval's already been done, so it's more just there for the sequencing part of it. Once the the information's been collected, it's in you know the the ideal state. Right? Um, uh, there is the state of we have to get this released, and um, what are we doing tomorrow to get that done? But I'll just talk about the ideal state, which is it hands off to Open Registry. Identity Match gets the does it a small enough check just to make sure that the accounts never existed before, returns an identifier. And part of what we're getting out of this process, we're tying identity match back into our current sync code as well so that we have a unified way of getting an identity uh, identifier for the campus. When we did the original uh, guest application, we it was a bit more of a bolt-on situation. So we just picked a different um, identifier range and, and just rolled with that. And this will allow us to unify that. Open Register is being used in general just because it gives us a, we, we are a campus that has multiple sources of record. And those are always needing to be pulled together. A key feature of Open Registry is its ability to add on another uh, source of record as, as need be. Down here in the the provisioning service is in part because uh, Open Registry doesn't know anything about uh, Open IDM, so it's it's part of the just a wrapper so that um, Open IDM is going to be our provisioning engine. Credential management also is talking to the uh, talking to Open IDM. So the main the main points here are that you've been able to simplify the the guest app by using the components from 
that already exist. So list a couple in my sense, sometimes I look and go like, yes, this is so cool, and boy, we have really added on a lot of extra work. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's definitely good news, bad news scenario. Uh, do you, I feel like I'm talking way too fast, but do you have any questions, interests, things that you'd like to ask about our, our setup? Yes, sir. What happens when you do get a match? That's a good question, and Ben could really actually answer that. Well, Francisco could really answer that. <laughs> in the current implementation, what's actually happening is basically the only filtering that's happening is on the email address. So we're not doing any more clever with guests. Uh, two guests show up with the same name the email address. Uh, we'll change that for dealing with the general population. But for now, basically, it's the equivalent of, oh, you appear to already have a record. Do you need a password? Right, so it's, it's uh, I guess a couple of the other features that Ronnie didn't talk about are in general lifecycle management, if you've given a six month or a year window, and whatever reason the, the, the person needs to have that extended. So the, the sponsor and both the sponsor and the guest need to be alerted that the, <coughs> it's going to be um, uh, the, the count will be removed if, if they don't go back and reassert it as a valid account. The other part of the application, uh, the part of the activity uh, sequencing is that after a couple of weeks, if the guest has not uh, accepted the account, it's going to be removed. So that's just another another part of uh, making use of activity. We have another a whole other project which is uh, called Cal Access, which allows, which is a basic workflow system for gaining access to various systems on campus. It's another re refactoring. I think that's about our version three of refactoring the, the access problem. But activity has been a really good solution for, for dealing with the underlying workflow. But we're using the using Grails as a way of uh, creating a standard UI across everything. Anything else? Yes, sir. So I'm assuming that you have a guest system, a regular IDM system, maybe even federated accounts coming in from, say, in common or something like that. Are you mixing these, and how are your backend applications dealing with all these sources? And are you providing them with one generic API that they can use, or is, is this a problem for the, for the actual service to sort of solve that? Right. Um, at this point, I guess part of why we, you know, it was back in the day of, of whether, of when, when the thought about having an, uh, a social identifier as a way of getting access to things was 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 initial in the initial stages. So far, most of the applications still are based around this one unique identifier that we have for the campus, and that's the point of of having the guest app so that you can have that you can still have that one unique identifier. So originally, like I said, we we just took a different, it was kind of a bolt-on. So we just said, well, it's likely not to be in this range. You know, it's, it's a, a big enough difference of millions of users. So for the time being, we can set it at that state and just have the regular system going along creating identifiers at the lower range and it's at the higher range. <coughs> so not an ideal state, though. and so. Using um, ID match as a way of create, it's now going to become the sole source of a identity of identifiers. So that's part of the integration that we're getting back to. Part of it is also a lot of the campus integration is CAS for authentication and LDAP for admins. Mm -hmm. right, so even if we wanted to accept, say, federated identifiers as a way of being a guest account, many of the apps won't be able to handle that correctly because it's not should. Somewhere, but not right, more, more, and more ship uh, people are moving to ship integrations, but that's probably more because they're doing cloud sourced applications. <coughs> so, if I understand correctly, then the, the um, these guest IDs actually wind up in your LDAP or Active Directory, just like your regular IDs do. Yes. And so the person's credentials in there. So, 
These guests are actually using your regular campus password change program and all the associated rules and regulations on password strength and that kind of things. No, no, no. They're uh, we treat them. Uh, well, the idea is to treat them because we don't know them. Um, it, it's it's um, LOA zero, so they they can the, the normal password uh, change mechanism. Like if. if you're going to need to uh, stand in front of somebody and and uh, make sure that they can tell who you are. And this this we never actually see them, so it's if the, the password change mechanism is is it's done. It can be done by email, so it's it's a much lighter uh, LOA. I mean, we're we're treating them as as well as we know them. I guess to put it that way. So the uh, credential management app, though, is one that uh, we're bringing over from UCSF, and it'll be a uh, it'll be one tool that can integrate with both. I mean, uh, dealing with you at the level at which we know you. That makes sense. Anybody else? I got one, one more question. <laughs> so I think you guys are also a people solve shop. We have a lot of people soft, yes. So how does your search match compare to PeopleSoft's search match? Because uh, I know PeopleSoft has a whole we have a problem with PeopleSoft shop when we get double identities because departments can't figure out how to find somebody that already exists, so you wind up with two IDs and then you have that whole mess. So right, right. Uh, so we currently have some sync code that does that identity match. And in the end, you end up with uh, you can have multiple affiliations, but having one identifier, you have one uh, universal identifier with many um, specific identifiers. And and the idea of open registry is is a similar one, and so that's why it's a natural fit for us. Anybody else? All right. Thanks, so thanks for coming. Sure.